Hello everyone and welcome to Battle Brothers, a game which can best be compared in my rather limited experience until now, as Mountain Blade Warband in two dimensions, so 2D. It's uh, it's pretty interesting, it seems to be a very lethal like mercenary band management game. So again, very comparable to Mountain Blade Warband. It's best to try and not get too attached to your characters, which is exactly why I will be naming them after my patrons. Uh, this will be brilliant. But yeah, I haven't really uh, played around with it yet. I've only done a few scenarios here. We've got like combat basics. There's no actual like combat tutorial in the game, which is a bit, you know, challenging for a newcomer such as I. But, hey, I saw some videos of it, it looked pretty interesting, emailed the dev, and they were great, um, they were kind enough to send me a key. So let's go and take a look at it. We'll be starting a new campaign, and we will be playing as the mercenary company of the Eagles of Fortune, with this lovely looking banner, which kind of reminds me of the Roman banners before the Roman Empire kind of crumbled. There's a lot of like different picks here. They're all very unique. I mean, this one reminds me of the Teutonic Order, which is interesting. And then we've got like other ones like people crying, just all sorts of cool banners. That looks really amazing. I like this one the most, so we'll be sticking with that. As for difficulty modes, we've got beginner, veteran and expert. I'm not gonna go beginner, just because, well, I'm new to the game, but I'm not necessarily new to the uh, the genre itself. I think I'll do okay on veteran. Besides, if people die, that will hopefully make for more entertaining videos, albeit a bit short. Rather, a shorter series. <laughs> we can also have different late game crises, which is an interesting thing. So, we can either have, like... The first late game crisis being a ruthless war for power between noble houses in the world. A greenskin invasion. Greenskin hordes threatening to sweep away the worlds of man. Or an undead scourge, which is very interesting. Uh, we're just gonna leave it on random for now. Assuming we even make it to the late game in this playthrough. Oh. <laughs> let's just say, my hopes aren't very high. Alright, let's get started. We've got a lovely little loading screen here. Blood already flying all the way across the screen. Always a promising sight, you know. The last battle. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hoggart the Weasel and his band of raiders. But it was them who found you first. An ambush. Some jokes about horses cut short by an arrow to the throat. Arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream, a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of your men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A harried glance sees the men charge without you to make a valiant last stand. Met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, oh, you lean on your sword. And with all the will you can muster, slowly rise again. To the end. Alright, so we jump right into a battle here. People are dying all around us. We've got Captain Bernard going in there. And he just got his throat slit. That is not great. Right, so we've got Anton over here. We've got Kettleman the Wolf. And we've got Grimmel. So, it, this is kind of where like the battle aspect comes in. Obviously, because we're in a battle. It's sort of a bit more like XCOM in this regard. Which is, coincidentally, also why I decided to replace temporary XCOM series with this. But anyway. He has the ability to shoot a bolt, because he has a crossbow. A good beginning weapon for ranged people. You know, bows take a bit of practice to use, especially the 
large longbows that the English later used. But yeah, everyone can just pick up, lay a bolt on there and aim with some semblance of accuracy. We're gonna take a shot at this brigand thug over here. We've got a 55% chance to hit, minus because of a, uh, a distance of 4. And we miss. Now I've got another bill here to reload. Ready another bolt to be fired. Now everything we do in this game takes up fatigue. I haven't really wrapped my head around yet how that works. I mean, of course, if everything you do builds up fatigue, at some point you're gonna run out of fatigue. We're gonna walk at this guy. That's gonna take up all our actions. You're gonna move up over there. And we'll try to put the hurt on them. Thankfully, he has a shield. Oof. Kesselmund nearly went down. He is uh, on death's door, as they would say in Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, the snow isn't helping. We'll try and take a shot at this brigand thug, although our line of fire is blocked currently. You know what? Let's not take any risks. We might hit our own men here. Kesselmund is in 3 out of 60 health. He's not, like, he's not got any special injuries. He's just injured. So he might li yet live. We'll try and slash this brigand thug. We fail. I could pull him back, but he is in the enemy zone of control, so that would be bad. But I'm gonna do some more holding back just for a little bit longer. And then we'll poke this guy with a spear. We just hit him in the armor. Okay, that's not good. So we're probably gonna lose Kettlemond here, which is uh, not great. And again, like I said, this game is highly lethal, so... Ooh. He only took two damage! He's, he draws breath! Alright. I'm gonna get you around, that should give you a clear shot here. So he misses. Fantastic. This guy's body armor is falling apart. So we'll try to poke him a few more times. I would really like him to die! But no, looks like we cannot save Kettlemund over there. Oh dear. Our brigand thug over there thankfully managed to miss both times. There we go, we finally land a bolt in that guy. We injured his shoulder, which is sure to put him in a bit of a bind there. We chop off that guy's head. Which is pretty sweet. That guy's morale is breaking. He's not feeling very happy about any of this. I don't blame him. Neither am I. Do you have any injuries? Nope, you're just, uh... Very injured. And there we go! We managed to poke him and put him down! They both have light wounds! That's, uh, not how I wanted it to go initially. We are very RNG dependent, but... We managed to come out of it without any further casualties. We get a bit of loot. The aftermath. You're alive. You won. The adrenaline fades, and in its wake, you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow shaft. Your chest heaves, pain for breath, everything blurs. The company has been devastated, cut down to but a few men, and that bastard hogger just did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind, it's Kettlemon the wolf sits down beside you, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. Bernard's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man, and a damn good leader. But all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Anton joins the two of you, still breathing heavily, then grimmled. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the men a good burial, then return to Undheim to collect our pay. The Weasel's men are slain, after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see that wound before we lose you, too. Wouldn't want to leave Anton in charge, right? So be it. So, this is the map. We'll be heading to Undheim over here. We'll automatically stick to things like roads and stuff like that from my experience. So it's just like Mountain Blade, you picked us the fastest path there. So now we must return to Unheim to get paid. And so we will. 
Interestingly enough, a battle site has appeared on a map where we just uh, got slaughtered. Don't think we can really interact with that for now. The return to Unheim! What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers. You arrive in Undheim. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The man who hired a company days ago. Werner of Undheim. No doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunts and wheeze. As an elderly man with shaky hands tends your wounds, a pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you, he you can hear one break. Werner of Unheim sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hoggart. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades in the end. The healer waves around a, f a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod, and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire. Flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Werner of Unheim hands you a goblet of wine. You did well, Seltzord. The brigands have been removed, though it is a shame that Hoggart still lives. We expect to get paid for this. Werner of Unheim gasps. Well, naturally. 400 crowns, as agreed upon. He gestures towards the servant who rushes to your side with the pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hoggart once and for all. I would pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we, sir? Ketamon the Wolf scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Grimald stands to speak. Yes, the, uh, the company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the eagles of fortune, Ketelman the wolf would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets. And Anton, by the gods we all know, he'd go chasing the womenfolk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the eagles of fortune. It's all we have. What say you, Captain? Ketelman the wolf burps and raises his cup to you. Anton playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard Hoggart or not, it's up to you, Captain. We've got some unfinished business with him. Werner of Unheim claps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent. My little birds will need some time to find where Hoggart is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies, so that you'll be good and ready to go. To end when... To end this when the time comes, I shall see you in a few days' time at the latest. As you leave, Werner of Undheim's house and stand on the outskirts of Undheim, Grimold seeks a word with you. We need more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but bravado won't do shite. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find eh, three good men. Buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this bodunk town has got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could travel to Norberg in the south. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these county bumpkins, or these country bumpkins. But we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. Then that is what we will do. So... Let us quickly go and see if we can enter Undheim here. There we go. So we've got a nice little town map from what appears. It does seem to differ a little bit from town to town. We've got an armor here. Interesting. He sells some wooden shields. As well as some reinforced male coifs. Nasal helmets, that sort of thing. These are pretty much all out of a pay grade. Like... I'm not gonna buy one good thing, you know. I'm probably gonna pick up a couple of shields, though. Got a nice buckler. Some regular wooden shield. A, a kite shield here, which is pretty good. But I think we'll stick with regular cheap shields for now. We'll pick up a couple. There we go. You know what? We'll get the buckler as well. 
So we've got a couple shields now, you can see they all give differing like melee defense and rage defense at the cost of maximum fatigue. So the more armor and stuff we put on our men, the less they'll be able to do before they get exhausted. We can go over here, we can check out our men. We've got Grimald over here. His gambeson seems to be uh, rather heavily dented. That's one way to put it. I'm not sure what this little, like, hammer means. I think it means it's being repaired, although I'm not I'm not quite sure about any of that, to be honest. He does have a shield, which is helpful. We'll go check out Kettleman the Wolf. Uh, you've got a two-handed woodcutter's axe. I think I'd rather have you have an archer. And I'll give you a decent wooden shield as well. It's gonna help keep you alive. You nearly died out there. You were on like one hit point for a while. We all know that's not great. We've got a heavy axe in reserve. And then we've got Anton over here. Who's, uh, who's a ranger for now. Now if we look down here we see a lot of still skills and a lot of information. It can be a little bit overwhelming. But I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. Like, I'm used to strategy games in general, so... I kinda like having all the information here, even if, you know, I'm not familiar with all of it yet. I'd rather have too much information, so that I can, like, look at my heart's desire and, like, maybe overly micro or something, but, you know. At least they're not trying to hide anything from us. Okay, so what do these stars do? No idea. Hmm. Yeah, I think that just means they have like proficiency towards skills by default. So Grimold over here, it's not gonna be it's gonna be hard to make him an amazing fighter, but you know, he'll have a ton of hit points and he's got a pretty good resolve as well. Interesting. Very interesting. I will need to have a closer look at this, probably like in between episodes, just to make sure I have a solid understanding of everything that's going on. Take a look at Kettleman. Ah, Kettleman has melee skill. And he's decent at melee defense as well. So this probably means he's going to be one of our heavy... Eh, he's going to be one of our um, damage dealers. Because he's got a lot of melee skills. So he's, he's, we're going to be able to train him into someone who's going to be very good at hitting people. He's also got a pretty decent melee defense, which means he's going to be good at avoiding getting hit. What we'll probably do is we'll give him a bunch of armor, you know, put him in some mail blades, maybe. Give him a good kite shield, that sort of thing. He's not going to be able to get hit at all. At least until his shield goes. Then we'll see. As for Anton here, you're going to be our, like, our huntsman, our poacher, you know. You've got a pretty decent skill on it. You've got decent range defense as well, which is good. That makes you very well fitted to being a ranger. Also high initiative. So that means you're going to be moving early. I like it. I like it. Background companion. Anzon is one of the more talented marksmen you've encountered in your travels. A clever bowman. He once lost two arrows simultaneously to kill a charging set of brigands. While he has a fondness for killing from afar, Anton's no slouch in close quarters combat. Then we've got Kettlemond over here. Rooting and at times suicidal. It's no surprise that Kettlemond is frequently found diving into the battle with nothing more than a large two-hander. Seemingly unstoppable at times. You are glad to have the man on your side. He'll use any weapon you give him, but Kettlemond has a proclivity towards those that can make calamitous ruin out of a man's body. Oh, he's got plus 10 maximum fatigue because he is uh, strong and he's got bright. So 10% extra experience gain, I like that. He's very dissatisfied because we lost most of the company, I mean, yeah. I'd be pretty upset too if most of my friends died next to me in battle. What about you, Grimald? Survivor. 90% chance to survive if struck down and not killed by a fatality. Sure footing? He's got 5 extra melee defense. Huh. What's your background then? Grimald is not known to be a big talker, but he has every right to be. 
sacrificing his family's heirloom. An old shield of wood and studded iron. He saved your life. With quick whirls and whips of a shield, the man's deflected all manner of mortal danger. Although rather quiet, you found Grimald's place in the shield wall to be rather indispensable. So yeah, he's going to be the guy that's going to be soaking hits, which is probably why he's got a lot of hit points. We'll give him a good shield, even though his uh, his melee defense isn't great. It's better than the rest of our people, actually, so yeah. Never mind that. Yeah, he's going to be our shield. And then Gr Kettleman will be our... Uh, or sword, or axe, or worship, whatever weapon he'll end up wielding at the time. For now, shield to keep him alive. <laughs> Anton, what are your skills? Dexterous. Plus five melee skill. And quick for ten extra initiative. Not bad. I'll customize them in between the episodes. We'll get some patrons up in here. No doubt they'll all die a quick death. <laughs> As you do. Let's, let's check out the marketplace while we're here. We've got some tools and supplies here. A good 20 assorted tools and supplies to repair weapons, armor, helmets, and shields. After a battle. We'll be added to your global stock once you're back on the roadmap. And then we've got ammunition. A good 50 units of assorted ammunition. Arrows, bolts, javelins. Used to automatically refill your quivers after battle will be added to your global stock once you're back on the world map. So it's probably a good idea to buy those tools then. And we'll get ourselves some ammo as well. We currently uh, we have some ground grains we'll spoil in about six days. That should be enough to keep us fed for a while. I guess. I have no idea. Now we can buy some things like maybe a short bow. Uh, let's let's see if we can recruit some people first. We can hire. So people have different backgrounds. Some of them uh, are more interesting than others. For example, we've got a cultist over here. Scripture is written across his arm in scars. The Coda of Madness. It reads... Fngli. Oh, this is Cthulhuism, isn't it? Or something like that. It reads like it. Mentions Dav cool. Hmm, quaint. Costs 300 to hire, with only 5 daily wages, which is pretty cheap. And he's got a dagger by the look of things. Over here we've got Siegfried, a vagabond. Vagabonds are used to long travels, but don't excel in anything in particular, so... Sort of a jack of all trades? During his drinking days, Siegfried managed to gamble away a small fortune. Now homeless, he simply wanders. Like any good, impulsive man, he flipped a coin on whether or not to try his hand at mercenary work. A mercenary band would be but another adventure for a vagabond like Siegfried. One hopes he survives to write about. We've got another Siegfried up here. Siegfried, the Rock! Burly and with church bells for fists, Siegfried the Rock has spent much of the past year sharpening his boxing skills on the grindstone that is his fellow man. Although he became an undefeated prize fighter, he was hardly earning enough to get by. Years of martial combat practically destroyed his memory. Some think he's mistook a mercenary camp as an item on a shopping list. And then we've also got Ruthard over here. Ruthard loves a drink as much as he loves a good fight. A potent combination! Gaining notoriety as a fighter in Holness Land meant he had to fight every single proud, boasting, and drunk man who came his way. Hearing of greater fights to be had, Ruthard has put down his mitts to take up the more lucrative vocation of being a sellsword. Now I don't know any of their stats, but their background will give you a general idea. What I'll probably do is I'll hire Siegfried, Ruthard, and Siegfried. You cost a, a bit much, and, um, well, when, like, looking at Twitter and stuff, I saw some of the uh, interesting handlings with the cultists. I think we'll leave that for now. Ooh, we can see how many provisions we have. The total amount of provisions you can carry. The average man requires two per day, and more on difficult terrain. 
Your 49 provisions will last you for three more days at the most. Keep in mind that individual provisions will eventually turn bad. We've got 17 tools and supplies. Alright. And we've got 38 ammo, although that should be refreshed once we hit the map. We'll add another 20 tools and 50 ammo. Secret the rock! You have nothing. You have nothing other than the clothes you literally wear on your body, which is not great. He's got a lot of range defense, which is interesting. He's got a decent melee skill as well, and he's got high initiative. Hmm. Interesting. So he could be a potent member of our shield wall. I've noticed this game seems to be taking after the trend of like the northern styles of fighting, you know, Vikings, that sort of thing. Generally you'll want a spear wall or a shield wall. So yeah, do you have any traits? Background brawler. 100% extra damage when unarmed. Huh. Do you guys have any of that? Nope, you just have general backgrounds, okay. Uh, what about you? You get the same bonus as well, okay. You currently have a hand-to-hand -hand attack. Oh, we're taking a look at Brother now, right. Impatient! Let's go already! What's taking so long? This character wants things to get started now! He's very good at health, very good at melee skill and melee defense. So again, this guy is probably going to be someone we give a shield and a sword and just put him in our shield wall. He's going to be very hard to get hit. He's going to be able to punch people quite dramatically. Yeah, we need some weapons and stuff. Secret the rock. You need to be rocking a shield for now. Yeah, impatient. Interesting. We'll see how that goes for us. Next up, we've got Siegfried. He's got a wooden stick, which counts as a mace. I'm not gonna lie, maces are pretty good. They're both... Yeah, let's not get into the talk about maze yet. Ooh, you've got a death wish. I'm not dead yet. This character doesn't care about receiving injuries and will fight on regardless. Good. No morale check triggered upon losing hit points. He's also dumb. Oh god. Uh, he's also got a double grip. Ah. That's something particular to the wooden stick here. Because he's got a double grip with his second hand free, he can do extra damage. Pretty good. What about a woodcutter's axe? Eh. He's probably not doing that. We'll give you a buckler. Try and help you uh, with melee defense. That sort of thing. As for your defense, you've got... A, you can be good at fatigue, so you can fight for a while. That's interesting. If I keep you lightly equipped and then raise your fatigue, you should be able to fight for a while. Eh. Yeah, that'll be okay. Then we've got our people who are already equipped over there. Yeah. That's fine. I don't think you guys have any perks yet. No. We'll get into that one later then, as we start getting experience. I'll leave the cultist, so we can actually afford some weapons. Although... Get some basic maces over here. I'll probably buy a few of those. Some of them are a bit damaged, which is not great. I'll buy the maces, why not? And uh, we'll definitely want to buy a hood, and just, you know... Some... Some sort of armor so that our people are not going to die in a single cut. You know, all the hits to the head are counted as criticals by default. So while they may look silly, they'll certainly appreciate not having their head cut in half with the first attack. And I will give my guys maces. You know, they may be unarmed fighters, but... I'm pretty sure a mace is gonna beat unarmed combat. Yeah, 10 to 20 damage, whereas you do 20 to 35. Linen tunic, we're gonna get one of those. I think I'll give it to Ruthard. He's gonna be able to stay alive, and not get hit more often. He's gonna be tanking a lot, so yeah, there we go. I think that'll do for now. We'll go and visit Norberg. I will probably end the episode shortly, but you know. This is going to be a bit of a slower paced game, just like Mountain Blade Warband is. But I hope you'll enjoy it regardless. 
I mean, hell, some of you watch me play XCOM, and well, that goes on for a while as well on the map. Along the way, as Norberg's skyline appears on the horizon, Anton seeks a word with you. I've never been to Norberg before, but I've been around those that look alike, look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods, as all these primmy pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye out for bargains, and don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Kelderman the Wolf seeks fit to add his own opinion of what you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pint. Gods know we earned it. Anton shakes his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that even when you're already drunk. And we've got a nice bunch of characters with us. Now we're up to 33 tools and supplies, 88 ammunition. Good. And we've made it to Norberg. We can check out the weaponsmith to see all the things we cannot afford. Dear Lord. We can get some daggers. A falchion. Best suited for slashing and cutting unarmed opponents. Rather, unarmored. There's like a javelins in there. Hell, hope. <laughs> it would be fun if we could eventually just transform into a Roman cohort. And just have like tower shields and hit them to throw at people. That would be fun. Role play to the max. But yeah, we can't really afford any of this. At least there are some things we can afford, but we've already got some equipment that's like not too terrible. I like this heater shield. I'm gonna be very vain, I'm gonna buy that heater shield. <laughs> just because I like the look of it. Uh, cost a fair bit though, I'll be honest. But as far as I know, shields do break, so having some spares might not be a bad idea. I would ideally like a leather lamellar armor, yeah. We'll sell this, uh, actually no, we'll keep the leather wraps for now. Keep it as a spare. Unfortunately, that means we're pretty much all out of money now. Because I have a love for beautiful shields. Oh dear lord. Some of these people are, uh, very expensive. Oh, I would have loved to hire you, but we're short a little bit of money. Perhaps if we, like, sell something? I shouldn't have... You know, we'll sell the woodcutter's axe. I would like to hire, like... Just one more person. Day tailors aren't used... Are used to all kinds of physical work, but don't excel in any. Whereas leave... You lack the conviction to fight for their homes, but they are now... They are used to long and exhausting travel by now. Edmund the Tepet, a rat catcher. Quick reflexes to catch your prey. Erwin the Vagabond doesn't have anything. Asgir, you are also a rat catcher. A lot of people catching rats out here. Interesting enough. I think I'll go with, uh... Niels, he's used to physical, like, activities. Having learned no craft, Niels is known as a day tailor. Someone to ask whenever an extra hand is needed. Niels wanted to do something he had not done before. So a traveling mercenary company seemed a good opportunity to clear his head. Sure. It does look like he came with some basic equipment. When I say basic, I wasn't kidding. The leather wraps are better than the sackcloth. Dear lord. We're in for it now, aren't we? You'll get a buckler. You're actually really good at ranged. Wow. I'll probably turn you into another archer at some point then. A lot of ranged defense as well. Yeah, we found your job, buddy. Cool. Now, who's our best melee defense person? That would be Grimmauld. Congratulations, you get a badass heater shield. Although it does reduce your fatigue by a little bit more. It's gonna be worth it when we don't end up dying horribly. That'll be great. Ooh, we've got a training hall, a meeting point for, for those of the fighting profession. Have your men train with and learn from experienced fighters here, so you can mold them faster into hardened mercenaries. 
We've got a temple where we can heal our wounded. Although we don't have any wounds that need tending. Just regular things. We need some time, that's all. Medical supplies. Yeah, those are pretty good to have. Thankfully we'll be fine. Contracts locked. Wait, contract locked? Oh. Contracts by the noble house owning this fortification. They rec they don't recognize you as worthy of their attention. Yeah, that's uh I don't blame them. Return to Wernard of Unheim. In Unheim, surprisingly enough. Oh, if you hover over a town you can see all the facilities available there. They're laid out on the map, maybe? Or at least there are position there are things on the map. Interesting. Unfinished business! Werner of Unheim is pacing back and forth when you find him. The healer who damn near killed you with the fire poke is standing nearby. He's picking chunks of dried blood out of his fingernails. Werner of Unheim claps his hands. Ah, finally, you're here. I have good news! We got hold of one of Hockert's former men. My good friend here had a little talk with the man. And now I know where Hoggart's licking his wounds. The healer clears his throat, splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He looks as though he's identifying a disease he is about to excise. The brigand known as Hoggart is hiding in a small hut in the tundra to the southeast of here. Based upon my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hoggart knows the eels of fortune are on his heels and will have gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, Werner of Vandenheim waves you off. Good luck, sellsword. We will return with his head. Held aloft. So where's the thing we need to get? All right there, okay. We found Hoggard's refuge. Let's go make our way over there. Ooh, the bunch over there. Ooh, just tracking in the game as well, I like that. We can set up camp, that's probably not a bad idea. While in camp, time will go faster at a faster rate. However, you're also more vulnerable to being caught in a surprise attack. So, like Mountain Blade Warband, parties can travel across the map, just like us. And, well, you can find friends, you can find enemies. Enemies can find you. Oh, and we have an obituary. Nobody has fallen since you took command. <laughs> well, that is going to change very shortly. Let's see, what is the state of our men currently? Your health is on 32 out of 53, 21 out of 60. I think we'll set up camp quickly. Ooh, pretty. Time will he uh, time will pass faster. Bit of a shame that you can't have like an overlay of like yeah, how things are looking. I would like my people to not die when getting into battle. Well, I think we're pretty much prepared now. Huh. Yeah, I think we're okay to go. But seven people, one archer. You'll be fine, you're on 45 out of 53. As for Kettleman, however. Ooh. Kettleman isn't looking quite as good. I think I'll actually sh switch your shields around. Like, you've got better defense by default. Kettleman needs to stay alive in this fight. We'll go abandon. We'll go attack Hoggard's Refuge. Your scouts, port, and you've seen the following: a few brigand thugs and a brigand poacher. We will engage. Two-handed axes can hit up to six targets with a single round swing. All right, there we go. There's the poacher. Who is uh, going to be annoying? Probably. How, will, how long would it take for us to get into range? It's going to take us like two full moves. We'll set up a shield wall and we'll let them come to us. Preferably. We've got a 49% chance to hit. Okay. You're going to act in two turns. I'd rather not like have him do anything. What I'll probably do is I'll end, I'll move some people one square forward just to like try and draw his fire. And we'll try and put some shots in this bring and thug. We hit him, we pierce his chest. 
which is always promising. Ah, we have found Hoggard, the weasel. Yeah, you can just hold there for now. He takes an aimed shot and hits the buckler. Right, that's what we buy our shields for. We'll take one step forward and you will enact a shield wall. Try and defend Anton. Good good idea, Kettlemund. We need to do something about Hoggard. The faster the better. That bastard shouldn't draw breath any longer than he has to. We'll hold our positions here. You can go over there. This means Ruffet kind of falls back, but that's okay. He sets up a spear wall. And we will form our shield wall. As we do. They seem to be waiting for us. Which is kind of bad, because I'm waiting for them. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working, though. We'll take, like, one step forward, I guess. Like, Siegfried's gonna be the brave one. Siegfried's also new. So, you know. If he is to fall, then, well, I don't think we'll really miss him. Not yet. It's a terrible thing to say, of course. But... Oh, well. You only need two ape, uh, action points to fire. What if I move you over there? Can you... Uh, only an 11% chance to hit the poacher. Damn. Right, we'll fire at the thug then. We miss. Terrible. Oh! That thug is moving up. Right. Uh, Kettlemund. Move up. Take a swing, which instantly eliminates him. Wow. Like I said, this game is very lethal. We will now enact shield wall over here. Make them come towards us. You can set up a spear wall, which is overwatch, basically. You will immediately attack anyone that comes near you. Wait, you, you're not able to move there? Wow. Oh, maybe because you already took a move? I don't know. I'm still trying to get the hang of this game, after all. Uh, Siegfried, I'll have you move around in a flanking maneuver. I guess the same will go for Niels. Now he's got a he's got a spear wall up. Yeah, let's not engage him then. In fact, I'll, t I'll have you take one step back. Hands on, even like move. Oh, reload takes seven AP. God damn! Actually, yeah, step back there. Kettlemund, our brave, brave warrior, has already slain one person today. Uh, we can move up into their zone, but. I'd rather make them come to us. Just hold with your shield wall. I don't want you to be the one like moving up and risking anything. That poacher is going to move back far. It's fine with me, to be honest. Uh, we'll have Siegfried go and engage this brigand thug in melee. We give him a good smacking. Hoggard goes for the high ground. That sly weasel. We can't really do anything, so we'll just end our turn. Grimmold, or Spearman. None too enthused about moving into his engagement zone. But I think I will. We do have a shield, after all. And he doesn't! 81% to hit, and we do hit. And he doesn't. Ouch. We take an injury on Siegfried the Rock. Come on, hands on. Good shot. We take out that dude. We can hit Hoggard. We can try and knock him out. Heavy blow intended to stun or incapacitate. Anyone unlucky enough to be hit for one turn, but... Not to do the most... Oh, yeah. Right. Stun targets cannot keep up the shield wall, spear wall, or similar defensive skills. We'll just clobber him. We did hit him in the torso. Did a tiny amount of damage. Nothing major. Niels, I want you chasing down that poacher. That 
That weasel managed to hit Secret, but nothing too major. Kettlemund! Engage that brick and thug. We split his hand. Oof. Sounds rough. Yeah, we'll hit we we'll hit Hoggart a bit more. Nope. Or not. Ugh! Niels is near death. He has a ripped ear. Not good. Maybe he's trying. Oh dear! I just got an achievement pop up. Scars for life. That is bad. I don't think he's dead. But. Yeah. Obviously, not a good thing to have happen. You move over there. Yes, you can. Try and stab him. Thank you. And then take a move. We need to try and take that poacher down now. Hit the weasel, come on! That would yeah. Go Niels! Get him! As for Kettlewund, engage that weasel! He's got the high ground, which is a little bit annoying. Just keep smacking him. He is surrounded. There we go, we're actually doing health damage to him. Niels has been slain! Oh god, a lot of people are going down at the moment. Let's see, how far can you move? You can move up over there. Try and put that guy down. That's a nice shot. Come on! Take out that weasel. The poacher is bleeding, which is good. Keep wailing on him. He's totally exhausted, he can't do anything. And down goes the weasel! Excellent. He should not be very happy right now. In fact, he flees. We can't really give chase, sadly. We only have a limited amount of action points. And he's gonna run as fast as we can catch up to him. Run them down! And he escaped. Fair enough. Niels and Siegfried are dead. I just joined the company. Received a lot of damage. Siegfried the Rock! Light Wounds is missing a finger. Ooh. And a split hand. We'll heal in five to seven days. Brutal. We got some loot though. A signet ring! Should fetch a good prize at the next city. We found beer! Yes! We found some extra money, some tools and supplies, some ammo, some weapons. The only really good thing here is the short sword. The blotched gambeson is pretty good as well. But yeah, we got really unlucky there. I say really, really unlucky. Wow. Two people dead immediately. Hoggart lies dead in a pool of his own blood. Skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. You put a boot in his corpse and look to your men. For the company. For all the men who've fallen. Anton spits on the dead man's face. Let's get let's take this bastard's head and get back to Unheim. It's time to get paid. But that'll be in the next episode of Battle Brothers. I'd like to thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, by all means, do let me know by leaving a like and perhaps a comment as well. It's a new series, so now especially is when your support is most required to make sure that this becomes a good series and, you know, get spread far and wide on the YouTube algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you have not yet done so and you would like to see some more Battle Brothers. And I'll see you all next time. But until then, have a good one, folks.